fight to Li Ming, uh, who, what team is going to be able to uh, get her. Um, Falstead is also a really good pick for that global presence, and uh, I know you lo would love to hear this. I, I'm a big fan of too with with Brightwing. Situationally, obviously, if you have like a, a Gray Main or an Ilden on the other team that you want to try to zone out, but a Brightwing would be a really solid pick to have here in this particular match again for that nice global presence. And I'm starting to think Lion Speed might have been watching that last cast with Zol, seeing how much pressure that they've gotten <laughs> on those lanes. As Zol is going to be the first band, and then the classic setup band to Kael'thas, which is going to give Lion Speed Lee Ming to start off this draft. Absolutely, and we see that Lion Speed is going to be picking up that Lee Ming, which again is no surprise. Obviously, uh, you know, one of the most uh, burstiest damage uh, characters in the game right now. Um, she is devastating if you can play her long game very well, meaning that you keep her at max range or you hide her behind a wall or in a bush and not get her too close to the to the front lines. Uh, completely devastating. And I know Jay and I, uh, we've been on the receiving end of, the, of those uh, battles before, and we can attest that it is quite uh, a, a game changer to have a really effective Li uh, Ming. Yeah, you think eventually I would learn how to emulate that and start flanking around the sides but, and doing no, all that, but, but no, nope, you know, I, no, no. Just, just, just haven't gotten it around yet. But meanwhile, Thrall and Anubarak is going to be the answer from the noob factor to this first Lee Ming pick. And I think that is a, is a very strong front line to start out with this Thrall, able to get in there and deal a lot of damage. But he needs a diving partner, and who better to dive in there than the counter mage tank in Anubarak? Absolutely, and with that uh, Li Ming, this is the perfect counter to her with, with the scares that he will put out uh, and really disrupt her uh, her missiles and her orb, uh, trying to hit home on, on possibly a, a character or a hero. Um, and now we see Lion Speed pick up Tassadar and Sonya with their picks going into the ban phase. Maybe looking to uh, steal Tassadar away from Thrall. You know, we see a lot of um, we see a lot of Tassadar supporting Thrall and that dive in potential. Meanwhile, they pick up somebody that, that can duke it out with Thrall on that front line. And, and Tassadar, the same way he gets a lot of advantage supporting Thrall, can do the same for Sonya. Absolutely. Um, really, really good, solid front liners that both teams have picked up with Sonya and definitely that Thrall and Nubrak pick. So we see a Rhaegar ban from the Noob Factor here, uh, which is pretty classic, pretty uh, standard. It's either going to be an LT, uh, Lieutenant Morales, or a Rhaegar uh, a Noob Factor electing to take that Rhaegar ban. Yeah, interesting to see the Noob Factor ban out Rhaegar because normally we see players try to pair Rhaegar with Thrall, but instead they decide to ban it out and deny it as the second support to back up Tassadar. Meanwhile, uh, you mentioned it, Brightwing is going to come out as the second band for Lion Speed, trying to deny them that uh, that constant uh, global presence that Brightwing can bring. And uh, just in general, Brightwing, a pretty good counter to any divey hero, like a Thrall, like, a Il like an Illidan, and like Sonya. So that's probably mm -hmm. what they're going for there, is denying them that polymorph on their diving Sonya. And I'm wondering if someone now, one of these teams, is going to pick up Falstead, being the only other real global character uh, um, in, in the game um, since Brightwing is now out of it. We'll see if, if, if Falstead makes a, a, an appearance here. And we now see a Tyrande coming to the Nuke Factor. Tyrande, one of my favorite heroes in the game, throwing out those owls, constantly being able to get vision on the enemy team. And that is really the big advantage on this map. Anytime that Tyrande is wondering where the enemy team might be, are they bottom, are they top, getting seeds, where are they? She can just throw that owl out and get at least an idea of where they where they are and what they're doing. Absolutely. Now we now see New Factor round off that particular phase of the draft with a Rainer pick, a nice auto attack uh, a, a player putting out an intense amount of damage with Hyperion and, and his Raiders, uh, along with his self heal uh, auto self heal that he has. And it'll be interesting to see. And there is what I was thinking they're going to pick. Lion Speed's going to answer with a, the Joanna pick. And now we see a Lost Vikings. This is twice J that uh, we've casted uh, a Lost Vikings match. And, and unfortunately, it didn't work out a whole, uh, all that well the first time we saw it. But um, here on Garden of Terror, you can get a lot of work done with these Vikings. First of all, any one of these Vikings can always step up into the Terror, and then you're not risking too much as far as uh, who is in that Terror as they go push. And if they end up getting taken down along with the Terror, it's, it's not too big a deal. But constantly being able to soak all three lanes while the seed phases are going on can really steamroll. Not to mention 
the ability that the Vikings get of being able to take the Merc camps and use their use uh, one of the other talents that they get to buff the Merc camps to get a lot more value out of those. And meanwhile, we're going to see Lily come out. Yep, yeah, yep. For the noob factor, we're seeing a very interesting yeah. draft. Noob fact, a noob heel for the noob factor team. I mean, uh, Lily. I, mean, I don't want to say anything bad against Lily. She is a, a tremendous. Uh, 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 healer uh, with her blind that a lot that a lot of a lot of teams looking for, um, and then of course her cups, and then we'll see if they go cups and more. My personal favorite, water dragon. Uh, but back to that lost Vikings pick. It's very very interesting, at least strategy wise, that that these these terror um, the seeds portions of the match can take some time to take down, and especially depending on who you have hitting the tank. And all the while, you could have these Vikings soaking two to three lanes. Uh, while the 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 seeds portions of the of the, map, the objective is going on, so it should be pretty advantageous for Lion Speed. And we are going to get go, uh, loaded up here into into the game. Uh, one of the teams looks like they're getting ready. We're getting everybody on the right on the right heroes here. And and I'm uh, I I tend to agree with you with with uh, Lily. It, it's a very safe healer pick in terms of uh, being able to get away and it gives it gives us the idea of what Noob Factor is going to be trying to do on this map with the map objective. They're probably going to put either Taronda or Lili, I would guess Lili, in the um, in the Garden Terror and they still have a Nubarak, Thrall, and Raynor to have this really divey team and possibly Taronda to be able to land those stuns, land the uh, the vulnerability that she's got for her trait and be able to catch some of these heroes out. And uh, just, a, just in general, um, a pretty good, well-rounded team in terms of picking for this map and the map objectives involved. Absolutely. And if we'd have to make a call on who won the draft or not, I, I, it's, it's tough to say. I mean, you could argue that at Lily Pick, you could have picked something a little bit better um, uh, than her or an, an Uther or a Malfurion for the root, uh, those kinds of things. Um, but if Lion's Speed, I'm going to go with Lion's Speed if they can play well with that, with those Vikings. I and mean, they, they potentially could really out-level and out-XP their opponent here uh, with that one pick. It's all the Viking factor, you know, and... and uh, I've I've seen games won and I've seen games throw just thrown just based on how how well they are able to control these Vikings. Are they pushing a little too bit too far in? Are they keeping good tabs on all three of them to make sure that aggressive rotations aren't taking them out? And it's a big deal that if they're depending on these Vikings to be soaking and they end up getting ganked, suddenly that Viking you know that the Viking doesn't give a whole lot of XP from being ganked. In, in that manner, it's not a big deal, but suddenly that lane isn't being soaked if they don't have another hero in it, and they end up losing XP that they were expecting to be able to get, but they end up going down in XP instead of going up, which is the whole point of picking Vikings on a map like this. Mm, absolutely. And uh, we're going to see how, how they're going to play Vikings. Are they just going to leave them in a bush, or are they going to play an active role in uh, the laning factor? Um, I really don't think that, that you can just leave a Vikings in a bush and hope that somebody doesn't see that, that uh, it's sitting there. Um, so hopefully this this Vikings play, whoever's going to be on Vikings, uh, really knows what they're doing. All right, we are loading in to Garden of Terror here. This Division Two match between Lion Speed and the Noob Factor. Thank you very much for joining in with us, guys. Sit back, relax, and get ready for another long one because we're back on Garden of Terror. <laughs> That's right. That's all right. <laughs> We'll see how this shapes out. Oh, there's got to be there's got to be a reason this map is almost always banned or just straight not picked in competitive play. I, I can't think of can't think of many others, but uh, we're we're gonna see a couple of minutes here where we're gonna see the laning phase before these seeds the seed phases start, and we'll have to see what these two teams decide to rotate. With uh, the noob factor can rotate a little bit more aggressively with their double healer and and their sustain comp, while uh, lion speed. If they play it the way I think they'll play it with these Vikings, we'll want to be a little bit more cautious. As we see a pause coming out, instantly mm -hmm. uh, we see Giggle Schmack uh, getting DC'd here. And, and I, we've seen this a couple of times recently where uh, the games have been crashing um, on the load-in Absolutely. screen. Yeah, and that's just the way it is. That gives us some time to get, some, uh, get uh, uh, some names out in talent. So if you want to take care of the blue team, I'll take care of the red team. Sounds good. And so far we've got uh, 
Um, S Fox 64 on Johanna. That's that's a nice name, Star Fox. I got you. I, I got oh, yeah. you. I, I see. I see the reference. Got that. Nice <laughs> Faux show on Sonya. Um, Glacius on the Lost Vikings. Zez on Li Ming, and Mo Pylons on Tassadar. Another, another great Star mm -hmm. I love it. Uh, uh, <laughs> For the red team, Scholar is going to be on Lily. Hoax is going to be on the new Barak. And my favorite is the reason I wanted to say it: Baby Cthulhu on, on Thrall, <laughs> Giggle Schmack. I like that one too. On Rainer, uh, Rainer, <laughs> Rainer, and Ouija is going to be on Taranda. And we see instantly a big fight here in the middle. Sonia almost getting knocked out here, but Tassadar. That, by the way, one thing we haven't mentioned here so far: Solo support Tassadar coming out for Lion Speed but is able to get that shield out on Sonya and keep her alive. Both teams and are already, end up walking away from this. Already we're seeing uh, um, Lion Speed with that, that, that big XP lead with those Vikings already in lane doing work on getting the, soaking in that XP. And yet again, we're going to see that, that classic um, Viking strategy where the other four members of Lion Speed are going to be rotating aggressively, trying to get picks, but um, instead... We see a big rotate, a, you know, a big play by a Nubarak in the mid to take out that Viking, and all of a sudden the mid lane is not being soaked. Yeah, absolutely. And we look at the top lane. Uh, looks like Lion Speed is trying to make a push, but they're getting kind of low there against those towers. Lily almost made a misplay there, trying to come out into her towers from Lion Speed's side of uh, of the wall, and was able to get back safely. And Glacius getting caught out a little bit on bottom with this Viking. He's going to end up going down, and Eric is not going to be soaking that lane. So yet again, we see the uh, the Viking players getting a little bit. The Viking player getting caught a little bit out here, and it's going to be a detriment to the strategy here, where they're trying to soak these lanes. Absolutely, and I think what New Factor is trying to do here is single those Vikings out. Uh, they know they're going to be in soaking lanes, and arguably they're going to be sitting in one of those two, bu a few bushes that are sitting up in each lane, and it's just a matter of going out and finding that and killing that particular Viking. And a big aggressive rotation here from Lion Speed. They're trying to invade to get some of these seeds and maybe get a kill, but in the, at the end of the day, this is going to be a 4v5, um, and with the double pretty support. Pretty low, too. Yeah, with the double support cop, oh, they're yeah, able to... Channel. <laughs> yeah, they catch a couple of them in here. Wow. But Anubarak is going to be the end up being the first one to go down, and, and that's my mistake. That was a 4v4. Thrall is up in the top lane, and he is going to take out Olaf up in that top lane, but Tyrande is an abject horror here trying to get out, but she will escape very narrowly. Great job on the on the part of Lion Speed to turn that around because for a second there when that fight was going on, it looked like they might have been uh, too low to initiate and get and they were going to rack up uh, some deaths. But a nice job turning it around in that little tight corridor down there beneath the terror um, and taking out that new. Um, um, I believe it was Thrall that went out. Well, no, they oh, were sorry, yeah, Nubarak. it was a Nubarak. Yeah, they were able to right. catch him in that little crevice there and um, and and uh, able to knock him out. But uh, meanwhile, Thrall has been staying up the entire time up in this top lane. Uh, they are going to take out yet another one of these Vikings players, but Lily getting very, very low as Sonya dives in deep. She's actually going to take him down and turns her sights on, on Raynor, who's going to get out. But now Sonya getting very low. She's going to have to back up. And besides having these Viking deaths, uh, uh, Lion Speed has done a real nice job of trying to push the, the envelope here, but just making sure that their players stay alive. I mean, of course the Vikings are going to take some deaths. We know that. It's kind of sort of like the murky concept. Um, uh, but even though they kept doing that invade for the second time, they were able to come out of there uh, pretty much unscathed. Yeah, and so far a pretty big siege advantage coming out here for Lion Speed, and they've got the XP advantage. Uh, the Vikings are seeing dividends coming from that soak. here we go with the here we go with the name bush let's check this out here it is Nubarak getting wow look at that getting uh, a singled out there but it was able to successfully beat it back and they have this fight right in front of the terror and Sonia is gonna end up going down as thrall comes down and finally we do see that 5 before that we were talking about with the solo support Tassadar not able to keep Sonia up as soon as thrall came down into that fight and uh, they, they ended up taking them out but Anubarak got so low, he was going to have to go back and tap. So neither team able to really get a big advantage or a big push out of this just yet. And and, and speaking of our, make, we were making fun and making light of the fact that these matches are going to go long. This night portion of the of the map, this first one, is still going on. We still haven't seen all the seeds taken out right now. If all these teams are doing is trying to team fight, jostling for a position to grab this final uh, terror of seeds. 
Yeah, and and, and the longer this goes, the more it benefits Lion Speed. They are pushing, Absolutely. not only soaking the mid and the bottom, but they are pushing it. They are getting tower damage as this fight rages on in top. Sonya is going to end up going down. Taronda, Raynor, and Lili all very, very low, but they managed to also get Li Ming. Absolutely. And even though, yes, they are getting uh, uh, the XP lead in right now and, and potentially have the better situation, they they, t they stayed in that team fight way entirely too long. They should have backed out, gotten some heals, and, you know, it, it's not going to really matter if uh, Noob Factor get to this Terra or not because they're not going to uh, get a full-grown Terra for them to use uh, yet, not until the next one. They are actually going to end up picking oh, up they are just, it. Never just enough I lied. seeds. <laughs> what a just liar. Enough. What a liar. Know, right? What a twist. <laughs> what, what a twist. What a twist. <laughs> oh, Ice Fox would be proud right now. Yes, um, yeah, yep, that's it. shout out to him. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, defini definitely a big move there. The patience coming out from the noob factor, you know, they were getting very low, mm -hmm. but with that double support comp, they had just enough mana and just enough heals to be able to make it through that team fight, knock out a couple of lion speed, and then get this terror. The big question is, what are they going to be able to really do with it? Right now, Absolutely. they are down uh, over half a level, and they've taken a lot of siege damage in the mid and bot lanes. Um, mm -hmm. The bot lane is pushing out, though. They were able to rotate down here and get a lot of pressure, and that is where they're going to send the Garden Terror. And so what it looks like they're electing to do is have the Terror push out by themselves. Um, and and um, it looks like Lili is in the Terror. Um, and they're just going to try to soak to try to get 10. Uh, that looks like the objective of this Terror is going to be is just strictly try to get 10 before uh, any major engagement occurs. Yeah, and I think they're just stalling this out. They realize they still got 48 seconds on this Terror. There's no huge rush to do anything with it. As soon as they do get 10, they'll be able to push with it, but they're getting a lot of push in top. So, yep, as I was mentioned, look what's going on at top lane. You know, this terror is going down, and the bottom wall just went down for new factor. They're pushing into this, their keep. Uh, uh, Lion Speed's top uh, tower up here. Look at it, and they potentially could get this down. Yes, absolutely could. Yeah, they were they were definitely um, with with, the, with the, using the terror as a distraction. They were negating the advantage that Lion Speed had gotten off of these Vikings, off of this extra soak, and off of having level 10 so much earlier. And um, and now they're able to push through that top port just about as fast as all five of the members of the new of uh, Lion Speed were able to push out the bottom one. Absolutely. Let me quickly go over these uh, um, alt talents that we have here. So Sonya taking Bless Shield. Sonya taking um, Wrath of the Berserker, who's already on cooldown. Play again for the Vikings. Of course, we're going to see the beam from uh, Li Ming. Uh, Force Wall for Tassadar. Jugs for uh, Lili. Uh, Locust Swarm for um, a new Barak. And I'll hold off on the weapon until we get past this team fight. A big team fight coming out. A huge Envade coming around the backside for the Noob Factor. And they are able to take out Sonya as well as Li Ming. And they are on, and they are on the chase here. Tassadar is going to come out with that wall. But he's only going to zone out the two supports. But that is going to be, it looks like, enough to get Tassadar and Johanna out there. But damage is done. Interesting, looking at these talents, um, New Factor has used all of their uh, ultimate abilities, while Blue, um, New Factor, or Lion Speed has play again up, along with having that beam and force wall is already up. So it'll be interesting to see if, if, if Lion Speed is going to try to take an advantage here, since they, uh, New Factor's talents are already down. Yeah, it looks like because of these short death timers, they are going to be able to come back in here and get a lot of push out. And because this bottom fort is down, they've got a long, long way to go before they're really in a safe place. So they feel like they need to back out of that maybe a little earlier than they would have liked to. Mm -hmm. And so finishing up our alt talents here, we have Thrall with Sunder, uh, Hyperion with um, Raynor, and then Starfall, uh, 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 trying to elect to go with that Starfall pick. I think that's a really, really great pick in uh, double support comps. She can get a lot of damage out with that. But uh, meanwhile, the Noob Factor rotating up, able to pick off that Viking in the mid that had overextended a little bit. And they are going to rotate up and try and get uh, Glacius on this Viking on top as well. Again, just trying to negate the soak, trying to make sure um, that they cover these lanes and that they take out these Vikings enough that they really negate that, that XP advantage they're getting from soaking the lanes. 
Absolutely. And here we see the Invade from Lion Speed trying to uh, see what they can get from um, New Factor here. And here is the Invade here, right here. A little bit of a slow rotation as Lee Ming comes down. The Sundering's going to come out along with Cups on top of it, and they are just going to turn on them. They were ready. They were prepared. And Tassadar <laughs> is going to wall off. He's going to go up top, but that is going to end up getting these guys split up. But they are, they are not going to chase. They're going to go right back to what they were doing. They were like, oh, well, that was a nice distraction. And they're going to get right back on this. Um, Thrall's going to be it to go back for mana. And meanwhile, the, the blue team here, Lion Speed does have a terror pushing in the mid. Absolutely, and it's already pushing on, trying to get into that keep, while um, a New Factor has to be to go back and respond to that. It looks like Lion's Factor is going to take the rest of that top terror. Seeds. Yeah, yet another huge advantage for the Vikings, as we see they ha did have Olaf in that, um, in that terror. Not a huge deal if they end up losing him here. But it's just, it, again, it's the stall factor. It's the, yeah, it, it's the annoyance factor where, okay, we've got our four people. We're going to go in and try and waste a little bit of time. Speaking of wasting time, Olaf all the way back into the base, making Anubarak really chase him down in order to get that kill. <laughs> I'm wondering if that was really worth it. Was yeah, it really I, worth it to get that guy? <laughs> is, it, is, is it worth it for one Viking? Yes, probably, right. but uh, man, is uh, man, is that annoying? <laughs> Here we go. We got we got a new factor. We're looking in for the for the gank. Let's see if they come in and come out of these bruises and see what they can do here. Yeah, they tried to do the invade, but it is sniffed out here by the new factor. They're going to get in on this, and again, the, such such short cooldowns. It seems like uh, the cups is going to come back out, going to keep the whole team alive, despite what Sonya was trying to do to this backline Taronda. And um, we also uh, are going to see that Tassadar was having a little bit of connection issues. Right. But he is going to come back in. And the chase is on yet again. Johanna and Tassadar are both being chased down by Anubarak. He's going to burrow in under that wall and uh, is going to get a little bit more harassed out on them before they back out. And if you take a look, to, at bottom lane, you got uh, the Vikings trying to push against that keep. And Thrall had to come out of that fight to respond to that. Very, very smart play with the Vikings right there on Gladius. Yeah, yet again we see uh, the, the huge payoff coming from uh, Bribe and Merc Lord. And, and they had actually managed to get two Seed Terrors during this phase. I, t I had completely missed that. But Gladius again sending one of those Vikings back to go ahead and get into the Terror. And he's just kind of wasting a little bit of time here. He's going back and forth. And uh, we are also going to see one of those other Vikings get picked off. But... Yeah, the bottom lane is pushing in, and just a lot of pressure coming out. They, Absolutely. Here. They're not getting a whole lot of kills. They're not getting a whole lot of, of big team fights, but they're just kind of shrugging that off. They're, they're, they're playing the map objective super well here is uh, Lion Speed, and uh, they're getting a lot of value out of these Vikings. And, and they're doing a great job. So this is a tremendous Vikings play this this time around uh, w uh, with this particular hero. Even though you had Sonya taking some early deaths, and uh, Viking it didn't seem to matter because Viking is able to compensate with the amount of XP they're able to get. Yeah, a big team fight coming out here, and one of the Vikings are going to go down as the Vikings start to come in and get involved. Sonya is going to drop, Anubarak is going to get killed, and overall it looks like they're going to walk away with, I, w I would say, s somewhere in the neighborhood of one to one and a third, <laughs> maybe one and two thirds <laughs> on that exchange. Uh, a couple, a couple of the Vikings come in, and uh, and th these guys are are really setting up to kill Vikings. That's what they're going after here. They know what is uh, what is wrong in this match. What is going wrong so far? But uh, not sure there's a whole lot they can do about it. That Toronto Owl looking to scout out isn't going to find them because the entire team is down here capturing these bottom camps. They're going to rotate right into these seeds. But um, the new factor rotating in on the other side, sniffing oh, out no. where they are. We're gonna uh, Lily going in a little bit deep, but of course, you know she's always she's always got those uh, fast moving feet to be able to get out of trouble whenever Absolutely. she starts to take a little bit of damage. She's doing it again. <laughs> she's trying to bait. She's like, hey, hey, look, I'm a little tiny panda. Come get me. But uh, not having a whole lot of it here. They're gonna take this fight almost all the way back on their tower as. Um, they're, they're actually going to rotate up to take down these Siege Giants. The, uh, the Merc Lord, they're getting a lot, of, uh, a lot of value if they leave those alone. So they're a very heads-up play to not chase after them, not allow them to continue to stall out and distract them. They're going to they're gonna take out what has really been owning them all game long so far. 
And Starfall comes out capturing uh, one of the Vikings, and we see a, the jugs pop, get popped along with Hyperion, and just the damage is coming out. It is immense. Just an immense amount of damage, but also an immense amount of sustain from this double support comp. The Starfall able to do a lot of the damage in the mid there, but it Lili's jugs able to keep up any damage that um, that Lion Speed is able to do to their team. Absolutely, and it looks like New Factor is going to be able to clean up the rest of those uh, seeds and get a tear out of it. Great job on them. Yeah, they they focused really. They've been focusing really hard on making sure to pick up seeds this time around. And um, they are going to be the first one to have the opportunity to tear here. They're going to get a. They're actually going to catch Li Ming out a little bit here. But a Nubarak with a mistake. He is going to burrow into this active, um, to, you know, to the active base here, and he is going to end up getting taken out. Right. And Toronto almost got taken out. Well, she still might. Yeah, Toronto's not quite out of the woods yet. As Tassadar and Li Ming are on the chase, not quite giving it up yet. They they realize that uh, with these Tassadar shields. And, and the uh, Calamity build coming out from Lee Ming, they're able to chase for quite a long time without having to worry too much about the turnaround. Absolutely. We still have uh, this bottom tier uh, of seeds still up. And it looks like Lion Speed is going to try to uh, sneak this. We're going to see if, um, and it looks a little like uh, New Factor is going to respond to this with an invade with a terror. They're going to bring that terror on in here and... Uh, Meanwhile, we still got the Vikings in each lane as the race to 20 is on, but uh, it looks like right now Lion Speed is electing to just back out of this a little bit and uh, see if they trying to think about whether or not whether or not they want to re-engage. The Polymorph is going to come out, and beyond that Polymorph, it looks like this might be the opportunity that they're looking for. As the seeds go down, the Condemn is going to bring a whole bunch of them in, but with this Garden Terror, it's just too much pressure. The Sundering comes out, Starfall is going to be laid down. And Sonia is going to be the first one to fall. Along with two other Vikings as well. Yeah, and, and we Lee now Ming. have those. I was going to say, we have now those long extended uh, uh, um, death timers running right now. So this could be really advantageous for the new factor here. Yeah, and Li Ming is going to end up getting punished very, very hard for her, um, for her trouble there on the flank. And uh, a great penetrating shot by Rainer there to get her out of position. And they, they're able to take her down for yet another very long timer. And now the Noob Factor is definitely pushing in on this mid lane. They're going to get quite a lot of uh, damage, at least to the front wall, if not to keep itself here. Absolutely. This is the first time in the match that we're seeing the Noob Factor has turned around that uh, uh, XP deficit and has now turned it into a lead. They potentially could get 21st. Yeah, one thing I can't ignore up here, though, is the Vikings up in the top lane on the other side. We're going to... We're going to keep our eyes on here, but the core is under assault on the other side. Um, pushing in really hard with the Siege Camp and all three Vikings there with Merc Lord. But uh, Jug's finally coming out here to get a lot of heals. And the, the longer this goes on, it's actually serving Lion Speed. They are going to be getting a little bit of damage on the shields here. Sonia is going to end up going down, though, and Anubarak's going to dive in. They are on the chase here as this keep is already down in the mid, and they could be going for a little bit more here. Absolutely, and it looks like the Vikings are going to start on up the still. They're going to still provide pressure as long as no one responds to them. They're going to keep throwing pressure, and you got those siege camps throwing the stones on it, taking down that shield little bit by little bit. Yeah, there's not a whole lot that the Vikings can really do about the pressure that was being put on the mid lane and the mid keep, but what they can do is walk right through that top keep and, and just kind of match the pressure in just that, in, in just those three heroes there, just those three Vikings. They're able to get so much work done on the other side of the map, yet again, just taking advantage of the fact that Lion Speed is able to drag these fights out, and they don't have to win. They're, they're realizing they don't have to win the fights. They just have to give the Vikings enough time to be able to really do what they're doing. Absolutely. Here we have a team fight going out uh, on the bottom of... Uh, Mercenaries here, Lion Speed getting pushed back underneath their their wall, and yeah. we'll, and the Hyperion comes out to to make sure they complete the zoning out phase, and he's gonna, and Rainer trying to take down that uh, one of those cannons. A very smart play there, getting the uh, getting the line of sight. It looked like on that turret. Rain, Rainer's not as far as I know, he's not one of those heroes that can actually outrange the turret, but just turn that corner just right, and he was able to just meet right. that thing down. Right. <laughs> 
Just, that's, a, that's a that's a seasoned uh, Heroes of the Storm player right there. I'll tell you what. At the very least, he knows how Rainer works. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yet again, the Vikings get a lot of harass with this. Look at this double siege camp. It is gonna. Th that's a lot of very big giants pushing into the mid there. Absolutely. Able to get that I don't know why would want to go back. Wanted to go after that Viking like that when he had these these. Uh, uh, siege camps just pouring in into their base and out of their core. Like yeah, that. maybe just losing a little bit of composure at these Vikings, get a little, getting a little bit frustrated at these little guys that are just doing so much damage to their structures. So you see a Nubarak trying to lead the charge here on an invade against Lion Speed, and it looks like Lion Speed starting to split up, and uh, New Factor might try to regroup and see what they can do about this uh, sea terror. Sonia, meanwhile, I'm um, not part of this fight because she's up there taking yet another one of those camps away. They are doing a great job of invading and controlling this map, painting it mostly blue. And yet again, we've got two camps that are pushing in to pressure this core, the core under constant pressure. Meanwhile, the blue team's terror is going to be up. We're going to have yet another one of these Vikings getting ready to come up into this one. Absolutely. And again, they're all having to... Uh pull away from his team and respond to those uh, siege camps. Uh, it wasn't an advantage that Lion Speed wanted to take advantage of, but uh, it just shows you how much pressure these Vikings uh, are, are actually putting on New Factor. Yeah, Bribe plus Merc Lord, man. They are, they are getting a lot of value out of that. And meanwhile, um, Glacius here is, is just kind of stalling, waiting for, the, waiting for his team to ro rotate on down. Um, all five of the Noob Factor are here. They're ready to defend against this. They realize that this could be a possibly lethal push into their base, and they are slowly backing up as they try and get some poke on it. The Sundering is going to come out, along with Rainers, Hyperion, and Starfall, but Starfall is going to end up behind this team fight. They are going to be able to pick off Sonya here, um, and Glacius is going to try and maybe take this Terror away from the team fight and maybe try and give uh, a little bit of a breather to the rest of Lion Speed as they realize they can't just continue to ignore the Viking, especially when he's in its Garden Terror. Right, and you already still have two Catapults hitting that uh, uh, core already. That shield is slowly starting to come down. So far, though, i got to commend the Noob Factor. They've done a great job of getting the defense they really need on their, on their actual core here, as, as only 1% has been taken away from the actual health. So despite the fact that they've had been under just a supreme amount of pressure from the Merc camps and from these Vikings. Uh, they, they haven't yet really lost any core damage. No, and I am tipping my hat to definitely do the new factor here, having to turn it around, so coming back and playing a deficit of, of one to two levels behind uh, line speed and, and then arguably tying it all up now. Um, and still, with that amount of pressure, only taking a little bit of core damage and still being able to do what they have been doing. And admittedly, you know, one of the toughest heroes to get used to playing against is the Vikings. Not a whole lot of people play the Vikings, so not a whole lot of people get a practice against the Vikings. But uh, they're they're doing a pretty decent job of handling here it here as they get as we get into the late game here on Garden of Terror. Absolutely, and it looks like if you look at the uh, death count or the uh, the kill counters, uh, New Factor has 19 uh, kills to. Um, Lion Speed's five, and, uh, and ten of those kills are coming from just Sonya. So she's been caught out a little bit, um, taking maybe some unnecessary uh, risks here, and they, she's paid for it in this entire match. Yeah, and, and it's still amazing to, to actually just look down at the board and see that despite the fact that we're in a 19 to 5 kill count, um, only one of the keeps are left for the new factor, and it is under assault right now. So um, they, I still I still will say it, despite the kill count, they have been playing this map pretty brilliantly. Yet again, we've got two Vikings pushing in the top and a siege camp on the way that is going to end up benefiting from Merc Lord, something that, that the Noob Factor know that they can't ignore. They're going to have to back off of this keep, which is going to allow the, the third Viking player that's sitting in the Garden Terror to come in, lay that plant down, and he's going to get enough melees to knock down the final keep. Wow. For the noob factor, wow. a, yet another amazing play coming out just from the Viking player. Absolutely, and I want to see if he can complete it by getting away, and it looks like he does. <laughs> <laughs> and he just waddles away, all off. Yes, he does. <laughs> taking his <laughs> shield, man. he's going home. <laughs> he's taking his shield and going home. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
so much fun oh, to watch. Do <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I guess we got a little too cocky for him there, <laughs> on yeah, his funny. behalf. Funny. And, and so now it looks a, like yep a big push coming in here from the Noob Factor. They have regrouped. They have managed to defend their keep, and none of these merc mercenary camps obviously are going to be able to come up while the Garden Terror is up. So they are, they realize this is their time. This is their opportunity to take this down. The Vikings are going to try and counter on the other side just a little bit to push into their core, but I think that, that the pressure is going to be a little bit too much here unless the Lion Speed is able to defend this and the, the big aggression coming out and a, a ton of damage coming down. This is going to be GG. They are able to get that down before before Lion Speed. <laughs> yes, the, G, the GG coming out. Very, very... <laughs> I, I just need to make it simpler. <laughs> GG what is coming out for yes. for uh, the noob factor. I, I, I I'm just that that's that's just an incredible turnaround there. It felt like Lion Speed was owning most of that match with the Vikings, but that just goes to show it only takes one turnaround to be able to end a game like that. Absolutely, and, and, and really tipping the hat to to new factor to not break under the amount of pressure that they were receiving and get and get into unnecessary risks, g taking what uh, Lion Speed was giving them, especially with 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 dishing out 11 kills to Sonia, and able to deal with the Vikings successfully as they did. The Vikings were able to do what they were supposed to do, but their but uh, new factor's response to the Vikings I thought was pretty stellar in itself, and then just waiting and biding their time until they found a favorable. Uh, team fight there right there at the end and was just able just to push it in with the terror once that once lion speeds terror went down and they still had their terror up it was gg yeah just an incredible response there at the end um just keeping everything off of their core being able to clean things up as they needed to but not over committing to it you know it's not like they were scared to come out into the map do the map objectives take merc camps take on fights but every time they really needed to get back and protect the core they did that very effectively they were able to defend against what is you know a very odd but a very good strategy by lion speed you know with their vikings player and at the end of the day they are able to group up and recognize when it was their time when it was their opportunity to be able to go take that game and they did it and and wow you know what what a response and what a finish to that match Absolutely, and it was really, really cool to see that. I think out of our couple of matches that we've casted together, that was probably one of the better matches that we've seen. Absolutely, and I, I'll, I'll also give a lot of credit to Lion Speed. You know, they had a great strategy. They employed it very, very well, and this was a very close match. You know, at the end of the day, um, that that was just one. You know, as, as most here of those of the storm matches come down to, it was one team fight at the end that decided that it could have gone either way. And um, you know, big ups to the noob factor. For, for being able to pull it out at the end there. Absolutely. All right, well, thank you guys for joining us. We're, we're going to have yet another...